Hello there, minions. It's Wheezy, and today we're gonna go through uh, an awesome gameplay of a Champion Hill match from the Call of Duty Vanguard Alpha. Um, I'm gonna tell you, stick around to watch the whole thing because it's friggin' awesome. Uh, and while we go through it, I'm gonna go ahead and give you kind of a breakdown and a commentary of kind of like how what strategy as I was using how I was playing Champion Hill is actually a very interesting game at least as far as uh, how you use strategy and tactics to kind of buy perks and weapons so come take a look we're gonna talk about it watch some great gameplay and it's gonna be a lot of fun Okay, minions, let's get right into it. I've got it paused right here at the first loading screen just so you can kind of see the intro to some things here. Uh, I'm gonna explain how the game is structured kind of as we go. I'm gonna have some time to break that down. But you earn money to get upgrades and perks and stuff like that. You have a limited number of lives. You're trying to beat everybody else by taking their lives before you lose all yours. That's the basics of it. We're gonna get into it and kind of break it down. If you watched my first video, which is kind of my initial impressions with the alpha, You'll see that I was kind of learning it as a go-to. Um, but when you start each game, uh, as players are loading in, you start in the buy area. And everybody starts with, I think, $1,000 um, to start buying stuff. Um, and as everybody's loading in. So what uh, I'm going to try and talk over it is my, my kind of what I've learned from this gameplay and uh, from playing this okay you start with $500 what I've learned from the game so far and I really like this game mode so the habit that I got into was out of the gate buying full armor which is three armor plates and doing the, the level one upgrade for my mp40 so if you see on the screen there uh, just below actually where I am here right here um, you have weapon upgrades so as you earn money even during the matches as you're earning money you can press right on the d-pad and it'll apply new attachments and stuff to your guns to upgrade them with $500 starting out you can immediately buy an STG 44 which is a good assault rifle um, but then you've got a decent weapon with no attachments and no armor I have found through playing several games that the armor is very valuable uh, at least early on so I took the armor and the uh, level one upgrade for the MP40, which gives me a nice little well, red dot sight. It's a yellow dot, but it's a World War II holographic optic. So um, there are also ways on these maps that are better to play than others. I've learned on this. Uh, there's four arenas, I believe, in this map. On this map, when you start on the spawn where we started. Going right is very dangerous because there's a long line of sight that the other side has the advantage on. Going left doesn't necessarily give you an advantage, oh, yeah, cool. advantage, but I found that it's much more consistent and much better. So I already mopped up a couple of kills coming up this side. And overall, you want to obviously play to kill the enemy, but you also want to be extra careful not to lose lives. So going head first into 1v2 fights or even 1v1s where you're going to get weakened and cleaned up doesn't seconds. necessarily uh, pay off in a way that's worth it. And then as I think however long the rounds are, about probably about 60 seconds, maybe it's 90, um, it. when you're getting close to the end of the round, unless you've got an opportunity to really get a kill, so it can be better <laughs> to let it tick down instead of getting out in the open and risking losing a life for no reason. So. We had a good first round there between me and this, you know, random I got paired up with. Um, 6v1. There you see in the middle of the map, there is an extra life. There's a little circle with a medical cross on it. I think every map by default spawns with one of those, which the idea is to kind of entice people to come out and fight for it. Um, this is the one where it's the most obvious because it's right in the center. Um, but it, it's, it's a good thing to try and fight for that, so long as you don't get yourself killed uh, needlessly trying to get out there because if you just rush for it and then they kill you then not only did you lose a life and not get that life then they'll probably be able to pick it up so um, there's a little bit of there's not a little bit there's a lot of gamesmanship to this um, as you go and here you can see we are uh, already down to, to half of our lives right so six out of twelve um, if you watch my intro 
uh, my, my first video I posted on Vanguard. The second kind of match I played in that, me and my teammate were like beating everybody. We had like 11 lives and the other teams had like zero lives left. But we got a buy round while the other teams, the other two teams with low lives were fighting and one of those teams beat the other one and it gave them the game or something? I don't understand. So there might be still some bugs that they're working out in this. But uh, this map we start from the other side, so I'm using this longer line of sight because again, for whatever reason, it just feels like from this side, that side is... This, the left is stronger from this side, and from the other side, their left is stronger as well. So, um, just kind of experimentally, as I've as I've been playing a few matches, that's kind of what I've seen. Got surprised by that guy. Footsteps in this game are not nearly as obvious as in Cold War or even Modern Warfare, for that matter, um, which I really like. So there's a the sound horn is still important, especially if people are close. It can give you some hints at where people are close by. But it doesn't allow you to just track people across the map by listening to them. Um, which, although I have nice headphones and I like being able to do that, this feels a bit more fair, <laughs> a bit more gamey. Um, so here, again, I'm taking damage, so I want to take cover instead of risking that. I, I pushed that fight a little bit because I thought I had a chance to get him through the cover. Luckily, I came out on top on that one. So we're still kind of middle of the pack as far as lives left. Um, but doing pretty well. Now, sometimes there is, uh, well, there's always, I think, a mid-match, like, buy. Um, I stocked up my armor, and I believe I buy, do I buy an extra life here? Maybe not. Oh, I bought some perks. So here's, here's uh, the most valuable perk I've found for this is high alert. Since it's 2v2, and you don't necessarily always know where people are, you don't get UAVs, um, unless you buy them, and then you use them for one match. Uh, high alert is extremely valuable, because it lets you know... <laughs> A, when somebody sees you so you can take cover, and B, which direction they are. So it is kind of a UAV. Um, so when you have money, you've got the weapons where you want, you've got armor, I suggest getting high alert. It's very valuable. So here in this map, again, I just kind of wandered out there. That's map experience. From when you spawn on that side, there's a good line of sight up there. Don't wander out into that. In the middle of this courtyard here, in that circle, you can see there's a life there, um, which can be worth fighting your way towards. Um, and it's just... There, some of the issues that are in this game mode right now are that the spawns can be a little predictable, and so you can tell the people who have been playing, especially as a pair, um, quite a bit. They'll be able to pre-fire your spawns. They know which parts of the map you can shoot through. On that, the map with the uh, walls in between it, you'll actually spawn staring at somebody, which means you can shoot them immediately, which is not great. So there's some things they might have to tweak, but overall, I like the game mode. When you eliminate a team... They drop their weapons. It's important for you to note that I picked up a sniper rifle that I think my teammate dropped when he picked up uh, an upgraded weapon from the team that we beat. This doesn't happen when you kill a team or win a match. It happens only when you completely eliminate a team. All their weapons drop, and you can go and pick them up. So if you ever eliminate a team, it lets you count down to the end of the match like it would normally get over there and search through their gear. It ended up... No spoilers, but it ended up being pretty important <laughs> in this game. So this next match, we're you know down. Uh, we've got four lives to their six. Um, and again, I'm using this left side. See high alert there lets me know that there's someone off to the right. Uh, so I take cover from that side. Uh, but I'm just, again, playing a little more cautiously since we are kind of at a bit of a disadvantage. Now, one of the things especially when you're playing with randoms like I was here and we're not even talking. I could have put my headphones or put my microphone on and, and talk to them and help coordinate, but when you're playing with randoms, you also have to be aware that they can bleed your lives even if you're playing carefully. So there could be some meta gaming in there as well, depending on, <laughs> on how that works with who you're paired up with. But um, I'm slowly cycling the map here. Um, when you take damage, get cover, uh, recoup. Don't try and re-push those fights, you know, because lives matter in this. Um, so another thing to point out here is since this is a bit more of a tactical game mode, a lot more competitive, it's important to play um, with your Wheezy's War College fundamentals, right? So go check out my um, map movement, my enemy engagement, my situational awareness videos. Here you can see um, you spawn like looking at the enemy, which if you had a sniper, I should have remember to pull out my secondary sniper you can basically line up a headshot before the match starts um, we're way behind on this one nine to two um, again using all of my fundamentals using cover checking corner slicing the pie 
all of these things are very important when it's more like this. There's, it's 2v2, it's very focused, it's less hectic, you know, you can't get away with as much as you can in a 6v6, so it's a bit more arcade balance, but, but here we got no respawns left, eight, ver eight lives to no lives, and uh, now it's conserved. Yes, you still want to kill them, but at the same time, you just don't want to die. My teammate's not spawned in, so it's literally just me, um, and if I die, it's game over. Like, we are out of the the, the tournament, the match. Um, and these guys have enough lives that they could just splash me. If this were the final round, they would be rushing me like crazy. Since they still have to get through other fights, they're not pushing as hard because they don't want to bleed any lives at me. Um, and maybe they're just thinking someone else can take us out because now it's 7-4 and 0. Um, we get lucky <laughs> and get a buy, a BYE buy, BUI round. Um and I had money, so I was able to buy a couple extra lives and refill my armor. Um, and I think I decided, uh, I don't know if I checked for any more perks. I've already got high alert, so then the next thing I'm doing is taking my STG and upgrading it basically with as much money as I have available. Um, and I decided to slap a couple upgrades on the sniper too, just because I didn't know what they were. And I figure with us having so few lives, like... There's a good chance that that we're that it's like don't hold on to that money. It's do or die at this point. Um, so now you can actually walk around here and you can see all the arenas. So you can watch the other teams playing um, when you have a buy, and so that's kind of interesting. Um, and you can't actually hurt them or like directly interact with them, but they can hear shots <laughs> like you can hear the shots from the surrounding arenas and they can see you moving around up there I got distracted in one match by someone moving around on top there um, so now all of a sudden we went from being you know six four and zero or whatever it was to now we have more lives so it's three two and two uh, so we've got to be able to you know the gamesmanship me not taking a chance when it was just me um, has kind of shifted the balance because I didn't get us eliminated and now all of a sudden we're kind of having an advantage so um, I pull out the sniper a little bit here because I'm not sure if I can get a snipe across the map but obviously someone's close I'm just trying to stay alive and regen health I felt like even with that push I knew I was really low health I thought that I could have won that fight um, but they were pushing they knew I was weak too so now I know where they are again I'm trying to play slow hoping this guy's gonna come push around again so I'm waiting and listening <laughs> um, but they don't seem anxious to push because again they're still um, now they're in the lead as far as lives but there's you know still three lives is not a lot of lives there's there's a lot of psychology involved with how you value your lives in this game so um, I think the teammate ended up taking that guy out yeah and so we're pushing around so That's it. Take their lives. We get that we get the the match bonus for that one. When you when you get more kills in a round than the other team, you get an extra match bonus to help you buy upgrades or buy perks. Um, but right there, like that's a good example of how that works. Like that guy literally spawned in. He was able to pre-aim a headshot on me and kill me as soon as the round started. Like they got to fix that. That's a little that's a little nutty, buddy. Um, but there's still a life on the field. Now go to kind of move towards it. That guy grabs it. So he gains a life and then immediately loses one. Another reason why maybe you don't want to push it. If I had killed him before he picked it up, it would have been a two life swing, which would have been better. Uh, I felt I had the advantage I was going to get that kill, but then this gas grenade uh, throws me off. So, like, I really, especially if I had a good teammate just consistently this would be a really fun kind of competitive mode but for just kind of like messing around especially when people are learning it's actually quite a bit of fun um taking damage i'm trying to use cover here not get myself killed um but i end up losing that fight anyway kind of trying to figure out where he is so now there's no respawning again so it's just my teammate um and he's he gets cover so we we live to fight another day right so we win we win that round and now it's one one zero we get another buy. Um, so presumably, <laughs> unless these two teams play super passive, one of them is going to eliminate the other. Um, I have 2750, so I don't have enough for another life. I buy some armor. Um, what do I check on perks here? Do I decide to get tracker? Tracker can be a good one. Oh, no, I, I buy survival training because that gas grenade. <laughs> I was like, that fucking gas grenade. <laughs> I will buy this perk, and that will not happen the next time. Uh, so I decided to go and watch them 
uh, for the rest of this and kind of warm up my <laughs> mess around warm up my sniper shot see if I can freak them out into thinking they're being shot at um, so yeah overall I don't know I'm surprisingly enjoyed this game mode it's probably a little more competitive a little bit more stressful something I probably wouldn't play super regularly just because when I want to hop into a shooter I don't necessarily um, so pushing in on him for the last kill so they knock that team out I don't necessarily want to be super stressed all the time um, but it's really good and this is built on the modern warfare engine it's very obvious that it's not the Cold War engine and it plays great it just feels amazing despite the World War II weapons but it feels like a really great game so after that, we get another buy round, <laughs> just because, I mean, I guess it's fair for that other team before the final match to get to spend some of their money uh, and buy up, so I'm just spending my money on as many weapon upgrades as I can afford, just because why not? I already had kind of gone through my purchases, I have the perks that I want, I'm happy with the STG and then a sniper in my pocket, just that I picked up off someone randomly, um, but we've got no lives here and uh, we're going into against a team with two lives, which means they get two lives, two respawns. So that's four lives against our two. So here we go, 2v2, us, our two lives with no respawns against their four. So they each get one respawn depending on how they die. Um, see the guy kind of clipping through the wall there, try to take some shots, but I don't know where he goes. So I'm like, okay, there's one on the right, one there. I want to be careful not to get picked off from the right. High alert pings me off, so I take cover, pull out the sniper. Boom, managed to get that one. That's good. So now it's now it's three, V2. Me and my teammate get this guy. They trade somehow. <laughs> so now it's just me, and they have uh, two lives left, right? So there's, because he got killed, so now it's there's just the, the guy respawns, so it's the two of them alive. I, I don't know if they've upgraded the scoreboard to track that properly, but... There are two lives on their side, so it's 2v1, um, and they will not have respawn. So that guy was up high there. I saw him, and then high alert here is just pinging me. So I'm going to recover, throw a stun. I'm looking for an angle here. This guy pushes, luckily, and he throws a grenade, so I get to kill him and then run for my heezy while that goes off. So now it's 1v1. High alert telling me he's off to the right. I'm using this cover. I know I've got cover here from basically every direction. He shoots, so I see him ping on the map. Pull out the sniper and get the shot. I mean, it went from us being at zero lives to getting some lucky buy rounds and then end up with a scavenged sniper rifle. Picking off, getting the 2v1 clutch to, to win the whole thing. So, um, yeah, let me just jump back real quick to this last kind of play here. Um... Again, it's good to be able to understand, like, using cover, map movement, stuff like that, like, taking cover. All of the fundamentals of basically any 1v1 apply here, where you're trying to just survive uh, and make sure that you're making good decisions uh, from play to play. So, um, you know, it's, it goes into the fundamentals, like, this stuff. I'm not the most skilled player in the world, but if you just make the right calls, make the right plays, take some chances, then you get... <laughs> my microphone, even when I'm not doing a live commentary, my microphone's still on, so I capture those, but... Anyway, uh, let me uh, throw it, pause that, switch over just to my camera here. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that gameplay, that break, that was an <laughs> exciting match. I couldn't believe that, uh, that I managed to clutch that with a sniper shot around cover, um, but... If you enjoyed that, leave it a like. Uh, if you don't like videos like this, you can leave me comments as to why. You can leave me a dislike. It's not going to hurt my feelings too badly. Uh, subscribe if you aren't already. Be one of my minions and stick around for stuff like this. There's going to be a lot more Battlefield 2042 probably than Call of Duty Vanguard just because of the setting. But the early impression I'm getting of Vanguard based on the fact that it's built on the Modern Warfare 2 engine and how it plays is just really nice. For those who haven't heard me say it before, Modern Warfare is, in my opinion, the best Call of Duty in the entire series by far, and Vanguard is built right on top of that. So I'm excited to see what happens with the new Infinity Ward Call of Duty game next year, which will be built on an even more advanced version of this same engine. Um, but I'll leave it there for now. Hope you guys had fun, and I'll see you in the next one.